students find exercises where they have to prove or disprove a theorem often very difficult, both in exercise class and on the exam. Fortunately, there are a few basic methods to approach this type of problems. In this video, we will discuss one such approach, disproving a theorem using a counterexample. How do you find a correct counterexample? That's what you will learn in this video. So, what constitutes a correct counterexample? So you have a theorem which has some conditions and then comes to some conclusion. Now, a correct counterexample does satisfy the conditions of the theorem, but does not satisfy the conclusion of the theorem. And in that way, you have an explicit example for which the theorem does not hold, and the theorem is, uh, is assumed to hold for all cases, so that means that the theorem is in general not true. So this is a way to disprove a certain theorem. So let's take a look into an explicit example. This seems a bit abstract, maybe. So for example, we have the following theorem. All odd numbers n are prime. So it tells you the condition is that you have some odd number. And the conclusion is that this number is prime. Now, what's a correct counterexample? Well, a correct counterexample, because the theorem is not true, a correct counterexample would be n equals 15. Why does this disprove the theorem? Well, n is odd, 15 is an odd number, so it satisfies a condition. However, n is not prime, so it does not satisfy the conclusion of the theorem. So that is why this uh, uh, example disproves the theorem, and that is why this is a correct counterexample. Uh, n is not prime because n is 3 times 5. So let us now look at what can go wrong if you are trying to give a counterexample. Let's take a look at an uh, incorrect counterexample. For example, n equals 13. Why is this not a correct counterexample? Well, n is odd, so it satisfies the conditions. So that is correct. Your counterexample has to satisfy the conditions of the theorem. However, n is also prime, so this n also satisfies the conclusion of the theorem. So this number actually satisfies both conditions and conclusion of the theorem. So this example does not disprove the theorem. It's a nice example, but it doesn't tell you anything. It neither proves nor it disproves the theorem. So that this so that, that is why this is not a correct counterexample because it also satisfies the conclusion of the theorem. Now let's look at an even worse attempt of a counterexample, and let's try n equals two. This is even worse uh, because n is not odd, so this number does not satisfy the conditions of the theorem. And then you can already stop, you or even uh, don't have to look at the second part. A correct counterexample does satisfy the conditions of the theorem. This number doesn't even satisfy conditions of the theorem, so it can never uh, serve as a counterexample. So this was a, 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 an example uh, where I can see how you disprove a relatively easy theorem using a counterexample. A counterexample, that's the essence satisfies the conditions of the theorem, but does not satisfy the conclusion of the theorem.